Welcome to the grimoire of the library. Does anyone know what grimoire is? Spells. No. Magic. Yes, it's a right. book of spells. Books of magic and spells. So this is what? It's like the spells, the secrets of the library. So, right? Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. You Let's talk because I have another section where I have all of you introduce yourselves to whatnot. So here we go. I have three libraries here. The first one is the Stuttgart Public Library. Looks mm -hmm. like it has one, two, three, four, five levels. Then we have Trinity College, the Long Room in Dublin. And then we have the Biblioteca Vasconcelos in Mexico City. That looks exceedingly interesting. So, anybody have a favorite? Dublin. Uh, yeah. I think uh -huh. the Dublin one kind of looks like uh, something out of Harry Potter. Right. Mm -hmm. I is. love the golden light in the wood. Yeah. Yeah, I like the Dublin one too. Just the stacks. You just, you know, right. get lost. And, in that. So and, cool. and the, the, for me, it's like, I like the ladder. I, I do, I do want to do a, you know, uh, reenactment Beauty and the Beast. Oh. <laughs> Rolling yeah. down the, um, with, with the uh, ladder. Actually. It just looks traditional and, you know, it's just what my idea of a library i guess it, it's it, i don't it's i'm looking at the picture saying it smells like a library yeah right. <laughs> it's it's good it's it's good and old ulysses either of you okay so just quick session norms right we're all going to be positive you don't have to put yourself on mute. I'd rather you just, you know, just say, ask questions. And if you are having technical difficulties, keep calm and carry on and here to help. So, aside from the wonderful librarians who are here, can you two tell me what do you know about your school library? And we have a third person who's joined us. Oh, now. we did. Oh, lovely. Yes. <laughs> How come I can't see everybody? Oh, there. There's. How come? Whoops. Denise. Maybe one is library. So if you click on the link in the slides. You can type your answers. You can grab a sticky note and start. You can change the color and type, what do you know about your school library? I know where it's located. Um, do you go in there frequently? Do you know your librarian? What does it offer? That sort of thing. And so there's the first page. What do you know? What would you like to learn? What intrigues you? You have a sticky note. You can insert an image, you know? Hmm. Or use a text box. Uh, Dragon. <laughs> it's not. Love it. Mm. <laughs> Here is to get the slides, and then that's the jam board. And then I will put in again the sign in for those who just come. 
last one I just put in is the sign in. Oh, that's I love that. Excellent. I love that, Ulysses. I think that's yes. you. Right. And just click on page two. What do you think? What would you like to learn from this session? You know, what about the library intrigues you? Well, if you don't want to, it's no problem. Just like if you just want to unmute or and say um, what you'd like to learn. Oh, well, great, Sarah. Sarah, what school site? Um, well, I guess I'm subbing for many school districts right now. I'm um, on at Salinas Union High School District. Um, but I'm not, I just moved here from a different county, so I'm not familiar with any of the libraries in the schools. Perfect. So I just figured just being on here with you guys, I could kind of just see what you're doing and how things are going, and that would help me. Would be fun. Great. Perfect. Well, you've got four of the five um, high school librarians on here, and we'll be going in more detail so we can um, talk to you. Different babies. Excellent. Okay, well, let's get moving. And there's a great question about databases too. Yes, so, I know. Yeah. yeah, I saw that. That is fantastic. Okay, so what we'll be covering today, we're going to next, we'll be introducing all the librarians for the high school district, except one. I mean, we'll give his introduction, um, but I believe he's still out of the country. We'll be going over our new library online catalog that we're going to be getting, which will be live in the next 10 days. The databases that we have access to that's provided by the state of California, which is a huge deal. As if they, they did not give them allow us access we would be spending thousands and thousands of dollars um practice citations and some digital tools and we will actually be doing a little lesson and then have you um go around so it's objectives introduce the library and the librarians learn how to access the resources, practice using the resources, and then you'll be able to share with your students and then how you can share things through Google Classroom. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm Stephanie DeYoung, and I'm the librarian at Alvarez High School. Next, we've got Carmen Schreiber. Hawk, Carmen, this is your turn. <laughs> I got to turn off my mic or turn it on. Turn it on, turn it on. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Carmen Schreiber. I'm at Salinas High. And what else? <laughs> That's it. How long have you been there, Carmen? Okay. Um, <laughs> going on my fourth year, this year is going to be a little interesting because in the fall, I'm going to, my schedule is going to change just a little bit, but I will be available throughout the day, um, all day long. So just email me. We do have a new library management system, catalog system. So introducing oh, wow. everybody in the school to that new system instead of Destiny Library would be ideal, but we'll see. Hopefully we could get as many orientations as we can in the first month. And uh, what else? I was a city librarian. Um, oh. For three years prior to working for the school district, it's my eighth year at SUHSD. Thank you. Mirtha Lopez from North Salinas. North High. Hi, my name is Mirtha Lopez, and I am in my fourth year at um, Salinas Union High School District. And this is my tenure year, so I get tenured as soon as Woo. I walk in the first day. Yes. So after, after the getting the credential, then... It took two years and then I had to get um, the two years to get tenured. But previously, before I guess teaching at Salinas Union High School District, I taught elementary school from kindergarten primarily to third grade for 27 years. Makes me very old. 
Um, and now a lot of the students that I taught in kindergarten how to read are the students that I actually get to encourage to keep reading in high school. And this will actually be the last year of kindergarten students that I have coming through. Um, so that's kind of sad. But the rest of them, I, I mean, their siblings will still continue to come through and they knew me as well. So that's exciting. That is fantastic. Um, my name is Patrice Parks. I'm at Rancho San Juan High School. I'm a trailblazer now, although I was a cowboy for 13 years. I, um, I was an English teacher for 22 years, 13 years at uh, Salinas High, six years in Shanghai, China. And then I came back here to open Rancho San Juan with, uh, <clears throat> with Mr. Hinton. He and I had been teachers together back in, back in Salinas High. And so I spent my first two years at Rancho um, continuing to teach English. And then I had an opportunity to kind of do a career switch, moved into the library. I am currently the librarian there and working on my master's in library information science up in San Jose State. Um, loving it. Uh, loved being an English teacher for 22 years, and now I'm loving being a librarian and creating programming that affects the whole school, not even, not just my own 150, but everybody. So um, I'm, I'm excited, and I'm excited to be here and be a part of all of this amazing group of librarians who have helped me every step of the way. Thank you. <laughs> and then lastly, we have Chad Francisco, who's from Alisal High School. He's a phenomenal librarian. Um, he is in charge of the chess club. He also has a library club. There's a D and D club in the library. He does quite a lot. He's really fantastic, and um, we're at least I feel I feel extremely fortunate that I have a fantastic, outstanding group of librarians to collaborate with and bring things to you all yeah, and you know yeah. basically what I think it's great is that we we all work together so well and then it's if somebody needs something from anywhere it's like oh you can ask any of us so just want to you know keep that in mind so our new catalog is going to be access it it is i will give you a quick short video maybe <laughs> oh i love technology get so excited and we test things out and it works. And then ta da ta da, it doesn't want to go. So, excuse me for a moment. Well, I'll just show that video later. I do have slides so you can see it in action. So, for our students, they will have a customizable media, multimedia interface. I can't show you live because we don't, it's not live yet. Next week, all the librarians are going to be getting trained on this. Um, so it has transferred all of our data from our current destiny over to Access It. So we can have multiple pages. We can have pages for each teacher. So teachers can specify and say, I'd like you to go to my page and we can have books, specific books. And that's not just physical books, it's ebooks, audiobooks, etc. And it'll be single sign-on through Clever. A big thing since accelerated reader is still used. Um, this is all you're able to search by level. And you can click right there and it'll take you straight to the quiz. So another sort of one-stop shop for the students. And it the books do show which ones have the AR and the quiz numbers denoted by this little orange 
symbol. And so it's great search ability. You can do vis visual search. So if students are looking, they want adventure resources. They can just click that. You can go more with the Boolean. And a fantastic one is the spelling. If you are not a speller, you spell phonetically or you misspell something, it will still give you results. A lot of times it will say underneath, did you mean, and it'll list and you can say, oh yes, yes, that is the one. So as you saw before, this giraffe is what this is. And when you click on it, it will show. And so for our students, gosh, even sometimes for adults, I know I misspell words and it's, it's not like what we had with destiny where you had to be exact. If you misspelt a word, it'd be like the book's not there. And that was exceedingly frustrating because I personally would know, yes, the book's there. And then if the student's looking for it, if they're looking online and they don't see it, then they, whatever. Okay, I can't find anything. And so then this is for us, we can um, custom the dashboard by subject, topic, theme. It can be um, age set so that, and we host different resources and it can have, you know, you can put in video games, videos. So it's like I say, everything it's sort of one-stop shop because we can put our databases here. So I'll be showing you how we access our databases in a little while, but what'll be nice is you'll be able to come directly through Accessit to access everything. So it's a great name when you think about it. So teachers, right? You can go online and you'll, you can say, I'd like these books, to be used or these, you know, for anything, resources. I'll just say resources because um, I also mean ebooks, audiobooks, anything from the Comic Plus database, uh, and put it here and you send it to us and we can put it aside. So students need to come in, you send the students, I'd like you to read this or I'd like you to do some research or we're bringing classes in to do research, everything's ready to go. Like I've already said, there is the one search, so everything is right there. All the different databases, which makes life very nice. What it does do is when you select the database, it opens a new tab. So you're, you're not having to click the backspace, it does open the new tab in the window. So this is just a quick brief overview. So this does mean everyone should please make appointments to come and have an orientation with us. So we want to show you in live action as well as showing the students. What it also has is show me where. So it has a map. So if a you or a student is looking for something and they can just go and see the drop down. So that is a plus. Thank you for um, But yes, please. and. Really, every grade level should come in. It doesn't have to be just English teachers. Every subject we love having in, we've got something for everybody. 
social mm -hmm. studies is really yes. important in science. Everything, even art, languages. And could I just say something, Stephanie? We no, have please, a couple, please. We have a couple of subs here. And like we said, subs are super important, especially now we're, we're real, we're needy of subs. And, you know, if you're subbing with a particular teacher, and it's you know you kind of get a relationship you could suggest that some of their some of their sub plans include you taking those students to the library and getting some of those lessons for the kids under their belts because having been in the classroom for 22 years i know how full teachers plates are and so they they are kind of ambivalent about taking their own time but setting up a lesson for a sub to come in and really gain those valuable lessons in the library um that's a, a really good use of that time so you can be advocates for us as well <laughs> exactly exactly i mean we are here and it's the same thing suggestions suggestions for books whatnot please 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 let us know same thing for your students ask them all the time please let us know what they would like because I can say, yay, I've got 20,000 books, but if they're not being checked out, that means they're just collecting dust and that's not what we want. So do not wait until the day before your assignment to do to contact your librarian. <laughs> I I do this, you know, with, with the kids and um, it, it's, and that's something that's, we're here, we're here, we want to help. And that's, that's a big, big plus. I always tell students, you know what, once they leave high school, and if they go off to college or university, make friends with your librarian. So Stephanie, yes. Sarah was trying to talk earlier, but she didn't know she was muted. So she's <laughs> unmuted now. Oh, sure. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's not your okay. fault. I just happened to see her mouth moving and I thought, I, I think she's talking to us. Yes, no, yes, yes, Sarah, please. So do you think, so as a substitute, would it still be beneficial for me to have an orientation with you, like to come yes. in and have you show yes, me? Please. I would love to do that. Okay. Ab yes, absolutely. You know, you come on, we're, we're here. It's like, you want to do a one-on-one? -on -one? We'll do a one on one with you and then, oh. you know, and then with the classes as well. So absolutely. It's not I love just, her idea as a substitute, you know, maybe making a library day. And that's like such a wonderful idea. Right. I mean, we, we all have. Thank you. Amazing, great, different things to to offer. So here we go to our database. So first I'll be just. So we have access to the ProQuest database, which includes five databases. We have CultureGrams, which has the world specific to the United States and one for the Canadian provinces. We have eLibrary, which are eBooks. We have our Sears Discover. This is more for middle school, 10th grade, I'd say the highest. Um, I will be showing you these in detail. I just wanted to go over these um, quickly. And then the Sears Issue Researcher, it has more of a pro-con database. And it's a little higher academic level. So usually for juniors and seniors. This does not mean a freshman or a sophomore cannot look at this. By all means, they may look at it. It's it's not grade specific. It's just for the most part for reading level wise. It's um that's that's just suggestion. It does not mean a younger grade level. If they are saying, oh look, I found this here, to say, oh no, 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 you may not use that, you're only a freshman, no. And then there's the PBS video collection. So we have over 1200 streaming videos with a vast content. Our newest one that we've had for just under a year is our science, the Gale database. We have environmental science. 
And then we have the Gale Interactive. So that's one with 3D models that you can manipulate. And there is a section on there where you can print in 3D. I'm actually gonna try that out because I did get a 3D printer from a uh, donor's shoes. It's just a little mini one, it's nothing crazy. And to see actually how that works. It has quizzes, learning activities, um, the same thing with ProQuest, all those databases, so much to use. And then there's National Geographic and that's more for middle school, younger age, but it's still, it's fun. It's fun to look at and read. We have Encyclopedia Britannica, so it has the different levels that they can search, and then it has the Spanish Encyclopedia. And then we have access to high school, has access to World Book Encyclopedia, and it has the kids, students, um, to Spanish, as well as your ability. It has some timelines showing timelines, but this is a way where you can actually create your own timeline. Please, any of my phenomenal cohorts, please jump in at any time. Hey, I'm gonna say something here uh, with yeah. the World Book Online. So I've, I've used it a lot in introducing it along with ProQuest and when the students are doing research, sometimes you want to just use, or I've suggested to use the encyclopedia to get background information. So if there's a person in the research project, if they're looking up an article in ProQuest and they get names or events or important time periods, you know, use the encyclopedia to get that background information. Look it up in the encyclopedia. Find out exactly who that person is or that topic is, because that's how the students build their knowledge. Um, it's a bunch of little going. It's going down the rabbit hole, and we have the databases and the resources available for you. And it's it's as simple as typing in civil rights. You know, doing a research uh, a pro con uh, pro quest research. Uh, topic in on civil rights. And then what about the civil rights? We know, you know, get some more information using the encyclopedia. And so I always like to introduce the two together because I think students have a general idea of the topic or the, the person, but reading more about them is where you expand that knowledge. Thank you, Carmen. was absolutely fantastic. Okay, search engine and re versus research database. So like I say, you know what? There's nothing wrong with Googling whatsoever. But what a search engine has is anyone can create a website and there's no quality control. We see it. I like to use what's happening in the real world. So, right, we have misinformation, disinformation. The majority of our students aren't able to, and adults. I, I, I keep saying just students, but there are adults who can't distinguish what they're always reading. And so when you just go directly online to Google to or Bing or Yahoo or, I can't think of any others off the top of my head, but any of those, search engines, you're just open. And, you, and and there really isn't, like it says, there's no quality control. And like I tell students, you can make anything look wonderful and not only just pretty and good, you know, it looks real, like kids will look at it, oh my goodness, this look authentic. And it might even have, because mm -hmm. those people will say, oh, you, you should, if it's got an EDU or this or that, it, it's great. And it's, hmm, you know what? Not always, not always. It's so you, you do have to take time to do that. So what research 
the database, it's reviewed and fact checked. You're, you have a limit search result. I like to sh show with students just like a basic one. Okay, let's look up sharks here and then let's look up sharks on a um, encyclopedia, right? There's like a billion returns on Google and I think maybe a thousand or less. I think I'd rather have that than having to go, oh gosh, which which one? Because we know that right with Google and the other all the other search engines, your top ones, who who pays? Who's giving us the most money? That's gonna be your top hit. And then it goes by clicks. And citations. That is a huge one. Your citations are available for the students to copy. This is what I say. They can copy and paste that to their heart's content. Search and engines, there are times if you are wanting to read the article, it's not available unless you pay. And Sometimes there are not citations available. There are, I've, I've noticed there are a lot more citations available if you do go to um, reputable sites like your .gov, it, like the CDC. If you're looking something else, something up for health, you will have the citation done for you, available for you. But Carmen, you wanted to say something? Yes, I also... I have an example of like, even though the databases and the encyclopedias, I mean, they they try to produce and, and include as accurate as possible information on any given topic or person or whatever, but sometimes they also make mistakes or it's not up to date, it's not current or something changes and, um, and you can contact Worldbook send them that, you know, let them know like, oh, I just found, I discovered that this date was incorrect. They'll update it. They appreciate it. If we're not looking for mistakes or inaccuracies, but when we do come across something and you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. You can always contact the database and talk to somebody and say, I, I don't think this is correct. And if it, and if we're wrong, then they email us the information saying, well, you know, it's been updated, but here it is. Or if they're wrong, they'll say thank you and they'll update, they'll actually update their information. So I had that. I've done that already and I and I was impressed that they took care of it right away. Thank you, Carmen. But I mean that's right. We all make mistakes. Then we have teaching books. If you have not used this database, I think you will be happily surprised. It has, it includes a plethora of books. It has lesson plans. They have videos, recordings, meeting the author, hearing how to pronounce an author's name. Personally, for me, I think names are important. And I think pronouncing a person's name correctly is 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 important you know my, my middle child I gave her the name and yeah and so <laughs> I I think and and people I have see students and I always ask did I say that correctly or if kids are like oh that's okay no problem no it's not okay I'd like to I just I want to say it right Okay, and they have all sorts of fun activities as well for the students. Right, sea otters. I'm sure sea otters is like the number one thing. <laughs> you know, personally, I'll take the sea otters over the seals. The seals kind of creep me out when I go kayaking. <laughs> They're little beady eyes. Anyway, I sorry, I digress. Okay, this this one, I'm not going to play it for you. This is just a video how to access the databases. I'm actually going to show you. 
right? Here's the step-by-step. -step. So if you go to your staff portal, and from there, select Clever. My page is going to look different than your page. I obviously have all the databases favorited so that they're there. If you don't see them on your page or right away on the, you know, the district page, then you just go to the search and type. So first, if you could select the ProQuest homework, it looks like the lighthouse and it should look like this. How about everyone want to give me a thumbs up or yay, I'm here. Just I just want to make sure before I, I don't want to go on and leave anyone behind. Stephanie, I yes. put in a, just a couple words about databases. Yes. Being in graduate school right now um, and having kind of the first time I was in graduate school was when databases really first started coming to fore. I used to have to go through the card catalog, the microfiche and all of mm -hmm. that. And these are incredibly powerful engines for our students. And so what we're introducing them to in high school are really a simplified version of the kinds of databases um, and platforms that they will use in college and at workplaces and in lots of different areas of life that we might not have thought they'd be used in. And so it really behooves every single student in our high schools to become aware of what databases are, how to navigate them, and then to understand that they'll be taken to even deeper levels of, of skill in how to frame a search as they move through high school and move through college. And one of the things that, one of my favorite quotes that came, has come out of my education, my library education so far, is that um, as a teacher, when I was a teacher, my goal was to get them ready for college. As librarians, our goal is to help them get through college, to finish college. And right now, we really need to work on that because our numbers in our district are not good for our students finishing college. We're very good at getting them in. We're not so good at preparing them to succeed in college. Anyway, my, yes. my soapbox. <laughs> yes. No, I absolutely. Thank you so much, Patrice. And I 100% agree. Um, we're here. We want our students to be successful once they leave us. You know, uh, obviously successful while they're with us and have them learn with us. So if they make mistakes, like, you know, people, oh, I failed. Uh, okay, well, here's your time to, to learn. This is not bad. How are we going to get better? The only way we get better is what? Practice. If we don't practice, we don't get better. So I will um, give the little spiel that a one and done is not enough. I would love to see teachers in here in the library frequently and teachers who have um, and and come in every every year, definitely every year, several times a year, every month, every week, you know, I love that. Um, but not making the assumption, oh, I have juniors, I have seniors, oh, they know that. That's not 100% the case because we do have new students for all grade levels and not just, you know, through coming from the district, um, but coming from out of county, out of state, and so, it helps. And then same thing for introduction for orientation. I know orientation is should be a must. Definitely this year, but continually every year, 
for every single grade because it's a quick refresher. Even if they say, oh, well, they did it last year. Okay, not a problem. Then this means it'll be a quick, hey, and, and they'll have to be the ones to, okay, hey, I have a question for you. Or can you show me? Or, oh, there's, a, there's somebody in, in your class who doesn't know, great. Then it's, Denise, I would like you to show Sarah how to find this book, right? That, that sort of thing. And then it's, okay, great. Maybe it's only a 10-minute session instead of a whole class session. But anyway, the slides are missing the library databases. Sarah, um, have, did you go, are you, do you have your, um, you've got your email, yes? Your yeah, email? I, I went on and I, um, I went on to the link and then it allowed me to go through my Google with my Salinas Union High School District email account, uh -huh. but then at the end it just says I couldn't, it says you you can't be authenticated and to contact clever at salinasunionhighschool.org. So that's okay though, I can still watch what you guys are doing and then maybe I need to troubleshoot it later or something. Send an email to Mike Allen. No, who would be, would Mike Allen be the best one? Because that's clever. He should be able to take care of it. Or you could call uh, IT, just call them and see if you can leave. Okay. Oh. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Um, but um, Ulysses, if you go to Clever, does it? So does this one? This isn't coming through. No. Let me try again. Let me try it one more time. Okay. This one doesn't. Okay. Well, here. Here. How about that? Maybe I gave, I did the wrong slides and I apologize. So what I would love for you to do so we could all go together, go on to Culture Grams. And let's explore the world edition. Okay, so what's nice about this, as soon as I've logged on, you see, here's my name, Stephanie. And I have the ability, I can click on, by continent. I can search by a magnifying glass. There are graphs and tables, flags, famous people, et cetera, et cetera, recipes. Okay, again, they're listed alphabetically by country. You can type your country in. I'm going to do Colombia. I was just there, and my husband's from there. So there's everything about Colombia. On the left hand side, see what you can do is listen to what you select. You can translate it into a multitude of languages. On the right hand side, if you have students who maybe you feel that the reading was too much, can go to the kids edition, back to the world edition navigate all these features on the right but saving it to google drive adding it to the classroom so jose maybe you're doing a lesson on uh, students have to do research on a country that speaks spanish you can add this, so it, you, maybe, and and this is where you use us, okay? Teachers, please use us. We're here for you. Let us curate 
articles, books, things for you to make your life easier. Okay, and then you just go and I'd say, okay, send it here, create assignment and go. And then title it, whatever, and then it, it's there. It's there for my students. So this is quickly. So what I'd like you to do, just go click in Culturegrams and you can choose any of the four. Oh, that's great. They use Culturegrams or they use ProQuest? Oh, Spanish courses. Um, and and try try it out. Oh yes, culture. See, for me personally, I think the best way to learn culture that I like is food, <laughs> and then you know interacting and to, to then to learn. And, and it's definitely, this is also another way um, to eat. This can be added for, for history, for English, language class, that if you could do an assignment, um, you're going to travel to a specific country. What are the cultures and customs before you go? What are types of food? That you can you... Also share... Oh, sorry. No, 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 go. You can, al you can also actually hear interviews from people in those countries. So if you want the student to get a different perspective, um, just click on the people and then there's, I believe there's interviews in Culturegrams. Yes. And then you can you can listen. So we'll go back. America, Colombia, right? Interviews. And you can listen. Here's a child, someone 29, 30. You know, famous people. There's, it's just a phenomenal resource. And just like Patrice said, for using it in college, it is a necessity and preparing them so they have the tools to use it because they will have access to more databases than what we offer. But the interface and the way to search is the same. So it might have a different interface look, but the way you search is the same. Right, yes, Jennifer and Denise, right? Music, food, food, I love food. Um, videos, slideshows, photos. You know, studying the States, I mean, the thing is learning other people's culture is, is important. And if, you know, you, you'd hate to go to another country and be disrespectful or, or rude, not meaning to do it, but if you prepare yourself ahead of time, this is, this is just life lessons um, for if, if someone's going to another country for business. And if you don't know their culture and customs, you might lose a business deal. And it's just something so small. Oh, sorry. Okay, Ulysses, sorry. So from Clever, when you sign on, you can um, add any of these databases, put a, like click the top left. Where do I 
bring their names up so I don't need to use. Oh, like how to get rid of them. Is is that what you mean, Ulysses? So I'm I'm not seeing that page on my end. So oh. yeah, just um uh, so yeah. so I, that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. So on my page where it says my teacher's page, yeah. It this is these are the ones that I've clicked and favorited. So yours, like I said, yeah. yours will look totally different. If you want to find ProQuest, if you go type up here and it should pop up. ProQuest Homework Central, and you can click on there. Or click or click on district page, and you'll see all the apps that we have. And then you just start yeah. hearting. The you bottom. can start clicking on them. Heart, heart, Gale. And then they'll Pro go Quest. to your, If your page is empty, just go to district page first and start clicking the, um, the apps you want to add to the top on your page. District page, you said? Uh, yes. Where do I find that? There, oh, there's a... It's to the right of my teacher's page. Can you see this? Can you see my page? Just yeah, here. yeah. My clever. Okay, I'm just making sure because I'm thinking, did I? I'm hoping I clicked my entire screen and not just the tab. So just to the right, it should say district page. Okay, so we only use Springboard, Renaissance, Naviance, Go Guardian, Talking Points, and HMH. Well, uh, no, I think these are the ones that the district as a whole uses okay. frequently. So that's why those are at the top. And then so, and um, then I believe they they then list everything by um in alphabetical order. Oh, okay. Can I can I see your favorites again? Just so I could get a screenshot of that. Oh yeah. There so it, I wouldn't put I get destiny discovered. Oh yeah. yay clicked on it and disappeared thank goodness um <laughs> because there will be no well there will be destiny for textbook room but not not for finding books not for the student they correct. they won't access to that correct so i was trying to get proquest um favorited but whenever i go to the the top where it says proquest is homework central uh-huh yes and it says single single sign on I, I can't heart that because it just automatically directs me to the page so how do i get that as a favorite so if you go back to the district page yeah where it says more apps it's uh -huh. probably the second one down because it, it's alphabetical so it's next to path okay. pathful connects and if you okay. click it there and then if you go back to my teacher page it should be there check let me see. Yeah, this is. Uh, I know they don't make it easy. You would, for me personally, I think they would put all of the wonderful library. Okay. Yeah, got it. I I just had to, just got to find them. Yeah, that was very. I was very uh, kind of a little difficult to use. I'm more used to like the EBSCO host, where you just have you just log into the page and you have yes. academics. In there yes. And oh yes. Well, see that one great thing what what I'm saying we won't even need uh yeah we'll need the clever just to log in to access it to click on the access it icon but from there then we'll be you'll be able to get login click on ProQuest or Gale or teaching books Britannica etc will be right there on the page but that we're not there yet we will be yeah. By the time school starts. <laughs> yeah. So yes, I know. I mean, I am showing you this this way. So this is, you know, I guess will be a secondary way. But once Access It comes into feature, then it will be like, like I say, the one stop shop. Yeah, just like at a like a university or a college where you log into the school's library and then Correct. you're able to access everything through like. EBSCO host. Yeah, because I, I don't even see EBSCO host here. Do we have access to EBSCO with an academic search premiere? We don't. No. no. Okay. All right. Thank you for asking, answering my question. Oh, Just, not yeah. a problem. So what I'd like to do next is to go select Gail. And you should see, so just, just so you can see that there, 
we we do have a new interface. Gale is different than ProQuest, different company. But what we have available. See, so this is this is what I was showing. It's like, right? We can do Gale after. Right, let's go check out the Gale Interactive Science. Here you can browse activities where it has everything listed. It'll have some images you can type in the search. I, per I personally like it like this. Um, you can select from um, any of them, but here's a 3D print model. I'm, I'm actually want to try, try that for once the printer comes in. But human anatomy. We'll do the brain. As you can see, this is where you can translate the article that's here. You can increase and decrease the font size. You can dis have display options, right? Because see, they have open dyslexic fonts. You can listen to have it read to you. It's like I tell the kids, you know what? A lot of times you're looking at a screen almost all day. Give your eyes a break. Turn this on and listen. Send it to Google Drive. Citation. Okay, you have four different styles here. You have MLA, APA, Chicago, and Harvard. These are the two. For me personally, MLA, ninth grade only, 10th grade max. Junior, senior year, they should be citing and writing with APA style. Again, getting them ready for when they go off to college and university. But I think the district has adapted MLA as what we use all the way through high school. Even though a lot of them will switch to APA in college, I think the whole district has adopted MLA. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was like, well, maybe that's something we need to work on to get changed. Maybe, yeah. You know, um, but see, then they can export it straight to Google Drive or one of these tools, bibliography tools in here, telling you about the brain. You can move parts of it. Go to the next one, right? And it's highlighting words. So this is great for vocabulary. Language, let's put this in Spanish. You, uh, right, you have to go and translate it each time because it's switching to a new article for each one. You can send this directly to your Google Classroom. Advanced search, right, terms, your Boolean searches. You can narrow, right, search limiters. Full text, I want peer reviewed only. You want specific dates, et cetera. This is another couple lessons, you know, that we teach as librarians for your students and is it will definitely help and is a necessity for them to learn how to search well, how to use correct terms. Instead of just saying, you know, start typing 
as they think. I want to know how do you find, you know, we're not, hey Siri, and half the time when I'm saying, oh, and Siri's just answering me now. Um, half the time when I'm saying, hey Siri, and they're like, I'm sorry, I can't find it. I'm like, Siri, you're worthless. That's not very nice. But um, that's the thing. You can search by Lexile. Okay, so same subject, same topic, but by Lexile to filter. Okay, so going back to Gail, I would love for you to do this, right? We're going to do Honeybee deaths rose last year, and here's why farmers would go bust without bees, right? How many of you like bees? Hands. I love bees. I love bees. A lot of people, there are a lot of people out there who will smash them. Um, don't do that. You don't like them? I totally understand. Last thing you want to do is get stung. Or if you if you have an allergy, absolutely, I totally totally can um, under understand. But this is how what, they are our biggest pollinators. Yes, there are multiple pollinators out in the world, but without them, our food supply is going to go down drastically. I have out in the front of our home artichokes and not the ones that you eat and so we let them bloom and they're the most gorgeous beautiful purple flower right so it's a thistle and they smell beautiful but i have seen maybe two bees come usually they're all around and they're so happy because they're having so much pollen too i was like where are you where are you, right? Because if we don't have these, what's gonna happen? Okay, so this is for blueberry farms. This is about berries. And that's what our, we're a big producer here, not blueberries, you know, berries in general, right here in Salinas. And it tells you without it, without the bees, no bees, no berries. Well, then there goes our revenue, right? So if you want to click on this, oh, let's see. Oh, look, let's see other articles that are similar. Okay, so Gail in context, the environmental studies, that interface, the way that you find things and share things is the same as the 3D. So that, that, that is a plus, right? But same thing, right? You can highlight, take notes. I haven't, I don't have an article up highlighting, but it offers a substantial amount of resources. Britannica. We have elementary, middle, high school, and at the top is the Escolar online, so the Spanish encyclopedia. What? Using an, an online encyclopedia different from using the physical encyclopedia is look at, at the amount of content you have right here. You know, back in the dark ages when I was at school, you had to look, you had to pull the index of the encyclopedia, look it up. Oh, Okay, go, then you had to find the specific volume and then go and find the page, you, you find it. Outstanding images, 
You can save it to your content so it can be right here as well as saving it to your drive. Right, here's an eruption. This is an old one. I'm surprised they don't have something more recent, but it's pretty interesting. So bibliographies. Right, Aaron. And here we go. Let's see. Oh, send to. I want to email this. You're going to favorite. It's like the icons are very similar. But the check site. Click. And here's a drop down. And where you can choose. Translate. Use the world. Listen. Again, this is a big one is listening. For students who have a hard time with reading. Font up, down. Questions, questions, questions. Carmen, Martha, Patrice. Anything else you'd like to say? about Britannica? Uh, so when you're using Britannica, you can have the students create a folder, a packet, and let's just say they're researching a country and they need to include an animal, an event, or whatever. The articles that you find in Britannica, you can actually put in that folder. And so everything is curated together. And that way when, cause you know how sometimes students will search and they'll see something and they'll read it. And then they, they go and they start clicking on all the hyperlinks. And at the very end, they can't remember that first article they read that fits what they're looking for. Well, if you start saving everything in a folder, right. which I believe it's the student packet that they can create. Yeah. You start saving packet. that. Yeah. They start saving it in their resource pack. They can always go back to it later delete what they don't use, and they can also make notes. Why did they save it? This one has some important information about a person. This has an image that I'd like to use in my slides or whatever, but they can annotate every article or image or video that they save in that student resource pack. So I, I like that feature that Britannica offers. Yeah, right, thank you. The resource packs, lesson plans, Yes, Joan, yes, students have access to all of the databases through Clever. And when coming back to school, they'll be able to access it through Access It. They won't have to try and find it, find any of the databases through Clever. They'll just need to go to Access It, and then it's right there um, for yeah. them. The only thing that's not in Clever that most high schools have is WorldBook. Yeah. And so you just have to go through your librarian to get the password, the username and password for that. Um, that's... I don't know why. We just, have, we just haven't. The district hasn't purchased it for the whole, for everybody. Correct. So if your school purchases WorldBook, then you can actually, you know, log in on a different link. But Britannica yeah. is in Clever. Correct. Right, so if you're going wanting World Book, it's on library resources, click, and then it's every library's their own logon and password. Sign in, not sign in with Google. Same thing, like I said again, that this would be something that would be nice if it was district wide. So it'd be a click, click and go. And again, the different levels to search two different spanish encyclopedias carmen do you have three you're muted let me here i'm gonna oh 
three what? Three windows? Three? No, 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 no. Three. Do you have three um, Spanish ones to choose from in uh, World Book? In World Book, we have Escolar, we have Aula Planeta, and we also uh -huh. have the elementary one. Okay, so we do. We do have, okay, we do, it's both the same thing. And then you have the ability for um, timelines, as I was saying previously. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the advanced package. I think that World Book, uh, I, that's the one that I've always requested. Right, so they have, you know, you can, do, do you want a timeline for continent literature, notable people, and it does not have everybody. So what you can do is create one, have students create one. You know, let's choose right. a theme, a description, they can add media and then go from there. So let's see. Ugh. Okay, that's not, I can't even remember. Timelines is great for history but when they're working on a time piece, you know, time period. Yes. And they need to include an athlete. You know, sometimes the history teachers will say, okay, so you're researching World War II, what was happening? Let's just say what was happening in Monterey County or in California during that time. So then the students start looking for all that information. And maybe there was an athlete that played on a certain team, California team during that time. And I mean, it could get. It's, it's kind of fun when you start adding different elements and not just, um, they're not just regurgitating information from the database anymore. Now they're adding things of their own interest. Uh, recipes, you know, food, what was the most common food that you ate during that time in the 50s or? Right, exactly. Exactly. I mean, there's a lot to do. I'm mean, for for every every subject. I believe every subject can benefit mm -hmm. from all the databases uh, we have access to. And then also, when you're using Britannica, you have the the elementary, the middle, and the high school. With the students and their reading levels, sometimes there might be a topic that they really want to read more on in at the high school level, but the Lexile level is too high. They can select a lower Lexile level and find that same information. It's just less paragraphs to read, you know, more images. It just simplifies it, but the information they're getting is accurate and it's it's the important information. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and the, like the kids have it so easy these days. I love it. You know, they, they have, you, you're not, you're unsure of a word. You can click it and it gives you the definition. This is, you know, the plus. So next, if you could go to teaching books. And then one more plus side about that is it will also give you the proper pronunciation of it. Exactly. So, you know, if you're, I'd like to use this for science when we're not really familiar with the way a word is pronounced, especially a scientific term. Mm -hmm. Well, just click on it and, and hear how that's pronounced. And it's another way of expanding knowledge. Exactly. Exactly. Right. I mean, that's actually making it cross curricular, right? You, you have your science word. And if you see the dictionary, then you can see, hmm, where did it come from? Is it Latin? Is it Greek? Hmm, it also could possibly be French as well. And knowing where the word comes from helps you then decode what the meaning is, etc. Um, no, World Book is through the staff portal, and only if you, the site, so it's underneath um, library resources, under where it says Salinas Public Library Database, it says World Book Online, and that's only if the school, it's most high schools, I don't believe all high schools have access to it. Yeah, we pay, then, we pay for that subscription out of our budget. So right. most high schools have paid for that subscription. It depends on their school site budget. Yeah. 
Um, See, this is this is all like, you know, you all could be advocates and say, you know what? Hey, this would be great. It would be great to have World We've, Book at yeah. every, every single site, right? Because um, if, if you're... Even middle school. Yes. It would mm -hmm. be a great resource for middle school. Yeah, so the district, we keep... So, uh, Talking to the district yeah. for being the <laughs> for the district package, but in the meantime, the school site actually um, covers that out of their budget. Correct. Yes. Thank you. So on to teaching books. What I would like you to do before we go through everything is I'd like you to type in do it in quotes Neil Gaiman. and hit enter. And on the right, it says, see all books. So you can see all the books that he has written. I chose him because, uh, do we say, no, it's through Clever. You can access through Clever. And this is another database that is from uh, the California State Libraries. I chose Neil Gaiman because Good Omens 2 is coming out. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> sorry. Those of you, anybody like Sandman? Watch Sandman? Graphic novel. I've got them here. Um, anyway, regardless, like, right, loads, he has loads of his books. So I would like you to select anyone. This is, and we're all come back together and have a quick little discussion. See, I'd like you to do. This, I want you to choose a book of interest. Look, forget the jam board. I don't know if it's gonna work. I've read this. And and maybe it's a book that you like of his. Maybe try a new one. And then from here, you can browse the resources. This one has 18 resources. It's on two state lists. I can look at its complexity. I can hear an audio excerpt. Okay, now I can listen how to pronounce his name. It tells me what grade level this is for, but suggesting the genre, right? And you can click, click these and then it'll take you, right? Obviously when I'm clicking that, it's going to take me to all the books for that grade level. Here we go. Over 24,000 books for seventh to 12th grade. If I want to just focus by genre, I can do that. You can look at all the resources, author interviews, their videos, audios. This is just for this one. So whichever, I, I'm just showing quickly. I just really want you to play around. This is to show you something. Here you go. Look, you like doing puzzles? You can do a puzzle of the cover. Okay. It, and the thing is you can do that, have students do this. Okay, here we go. Okay, here it is. Oh, okay. And go. And let's see. Do they have? Okay. Oh, this is just getting it click, click. I was wondering if they started playing music. But yes, I'm sure. They'll create a word search for you. There's just a lot just from the one page. So what I would like you to do, please, if you just go through whichever one you like and, and look at um, 
choose three different things that you liked. And um, let's do like five minutes. Does that work? And then we come back and uh, then share. music for this one. Oh. Oh. Thanks, Carlos. And hi. Okay. For those of you who are having problems with Clever, Carlos contacts IT and says Clever Portal is not in sync. It's going to resume at the end of this month. Yay. So how's everybody doing? Still checking it out? Ready to share? Do you want, ooh, sorry. Carlos? Where are you? Hey. Oh, look at you. And you're, you're on funky. Do you have headphones plugged in? No. Oh, oh. No. You've got like funky techno music playing off your computer. Um, I was going to say, so you can't access any of these? No, it doesn't let me. Because of Clever, uh, here, clever? Uh, let me just give you, yeah. see if this link works. Do they have full text available? Uh, do you mean, um, Ulysses, do you mean the text of the book? Yeah, like if they have like a PDF or like mm -hmm. a reader that I could go along, kind of like in the Internet Archive where I could just flip the book. Oh, yeah, no. Oh, okay. This is this is just giving you like resources. So, for example, um, you have lesson plans you can have. 
Oh, okay. Interviews. It's, you know, a vocabulary list, book guides, activities. Um, and then if you wanted to create a list. So if you went through um, here, let, let's say you're doing something on fairy tales. And you select fairy tales and you could start clicking. See all the plus sign? And you can create a list fairy tales folklore. And then you can uh, go go through anything and then you just create your collection. Oh, I guess I was like, oh my God, what's going on? <laughs> so anybody want to share things that they found, resources? I couldn't really get onto it. I sent an email in um, for tech help, but just by watching you, I mean, it's really hard to pick three things because it's so cool. There's so much, so many different ways to access so much information. Just like at a click, I love this. Right, but I mean, I, yeah. The, the three things I really, I love, I mean, I love the 3D images. I've never, I honestly didn't even know you could do that. I didn't know you could print stuff like that out. That's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. And so see <laughs> here, here I'm looking at this book, Cinder. It has a book trailer. So you could um, show this to students and after they've read a book, say, okay, I'd like you to create a book trailer for the book you've just read. Oh, wow. And they could do that for, you know, that could be an assignment. They could then share it with me and then I can upload it on the Access It page, right? And it's, it's just and same thing with reviews. If they if they want to review something, that's that same thing. So what I've done in the library is share. I'll go to the share and we can create what are called shelf talkers. And so they scan this QR code and it'll take them to the book trailer. Not everyone has a book trailer. Others have different ones. Other ones have um, the reading the audio excerpt or just they want to listen to the author. That same sort of thing. So even the encyclopedia, like you were saying, I remember, you know, I know my son, you know, he's in middle school, so he does a lot of research and he looks online. But this is just so much more in depth with all the appropriate citations and you know, you get correct information. So this is a, an amazing resource for the kids. I it love is. that. It's and a I great resource. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. I was telling my son, I was like, you know, you're so lucky. I used to actually have all the encyclopedias, you know, at my dad's house on the shelf and we'd have to go through. And he's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because we don't have them anymore, but it's just so amazing. Exactly. I mean, it is, it, it really is phenomenal and we we are as a district or as a state i should say very fortunate that we have accessibility to all these databases because i used to work at a private school and we used to have these databases tens of thousands of dollars i mean it's expensive yeah and uh, i just feel like this is great it's free and this is same thing. This is what they will be using when they leave high school to go to college. It's the same thing, regardless whether they go to college or university or not, they need to learn the skills of how to do good research. And it puts it into their hands too. It makes it fun for them. Like they can yes. learn how to do the research while they're hands-on and doing all of these things makes it more interesting for them to do that. So that's just so great. Correct. Correct. Yes, I, I'll um, absolutely uh, agree with you, Joan. Author interviews, that's very cool. Actually listening to the author, it's like, oh, oh, wow, you know, or um, how how they came to um, 
write that book? What gave them that idea? And really, it could actually spark something in students like, oh, 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 really? That, that's, that's how, that's how they wrote this book? Oh, I could do that. Absolutely, you can do that. You know, 100% you could do that. Now, this has been a lot to, right, digest <laughs> in this time. We, we still have time. And um, I would just like to ask questions. What questions do you have that I can help with? Uh and I really liked was the culture groups. And culture. I really liked um, the summer it was a part of Ed for the RP center on the, the culinary class. And when you were able to show me the culture group, I was like, wow, oh, this kid's totally opened up a whole different um, thing for the culinary classes for students to get an idea and see like um all these different dishes from like different countries absolutely I know we, had, um, we saw videos yep but it seems that would be like a whole different like outlook like at um all these different dishes for culinary students Right. A absolutely. And then see, it's, this is why it's like, I, I love it. It's like, you know, this is, I guess, maybe I'll see if it, connecting with the Career Center more and just say, hey, have us come and do do a session with the students. Because, right, doing um, the having them create a dish or using one of the recipes from culture grams from whichever country, and they could use it for multiple subjects, right? They can use science, the science of the measuring and the actual cooking, there's science and math right there. And then if it's a specific country, that's language. If you think that you could, you could work it in for, maybe it's the book you're reading in English, you know, so that's, <laughs> I like to connect, you know, let, let's make it a full circle so we can, interconnect everything so they get the real world experience. So instead of why am I doing this? Okay, let me tell you, do you understand? You know, you really love cooking, excellent. You know what? Maybe you're not, you don't feel like you're so strong at math or this and that. Well, actually, let, let's look at it in this perspective. Look at how well you do here, preparing this dish. It, it does take math and science to get there. Let, let's figure out, you know, and then let's talk. And how, how can then, then it's, oh, oh, I didn't know, right? Because hey, I, I understand it's like, uh, geometry, what am I ever gonna use that for? You know, <laughs> or certain things. And, and when, when we can t tie it in, then it's, ah, okay, right? Like I, I took, so I had the uh, privilege to go on a all expense paid trip to Colombia um, in May, and it was phenomenal. I my husband was born there and lived his first five years there. Um, I took many, many, many years of Spanish in middle school, high school, even a couple years in college, um, and my husband's fluent. And so I got to practice my Spanish. <laughs> oh, I mean, yes, I, pra I, do, I do try and practice with students. And I do try and tell like the ELA students, I'm like, look, you know, I, I understand really well. My speaking, meh, I mean, I, I'm not so great, but hey, let's work together. And so, so that, was, that was a big thing. And it's, okay, hey, how can, how can we then um, go further? Making, making connections makes makes the difference i think um there is another application i want to show you 
it um, I did I didn't put it on the slides I'm I'm really trying to um, get this to be part of um, clever is Mac and Dia. And uh, what I purchased, I purchased it for our school, but the entire district can use it because it's not a one-to-one. -one. So there's a Comics Plus database. And what you can have is you could have small groups reading it, entire class, the entire subject, you know, let's say if it was English, let, forget English. Everything has to be about English. Let's forget English class. Sorry for any English teachers. I'm, I don't mean to, you know, say that, but, but let's make it science. And all science teachers every single student is going to read this book and they can read it all simultaneously and it doesn't matter you know maybe i'm on page one carmen's on page 20. it's it's not going to affect anybody whole district reads you know here we go again here's science but when we get to women's history month maybe as a district we'll read this everyone in the district together could read it. You can add it to your shelf, you can share it. This is a big plus. I also have a lot of audiobooks. This is something I'd like to see if we could just have everyone in the district, you know, so all of us librarians, we just do it in one place and, and anybody can come and listen to the audiobooks. And this is huge. Audiobooks are audiobooks, listening to an audiobook, that's reading, you know? So people are like, oh, you're just listening to it. No, you're still consuming it. So that is reading. We do have a lot of students, right? I can tell you. So I am one of the assistant coaches for water polo. One of my um, players, he said for his his AP Lang um, assignment for summer, he's like, oh, I'm listening to the audiobook. He's like, mm, I'm dyslexic like my dad, and it's easier for me to, and I said, absolutely, that's fantastic. And so this is the, the whole point is they can listen and they can go along with it, if with the text. So. Anything to make students feel successful, everyone feel good. This is our big our big push as librarians, right? And and that again, gotta say to to all of you out there, we are here for you. Don't say, oh, 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 I don't want to bother you. We're here for you. We're here for you. We we want to do things for you. We we're you know we want to collaborate with you. Work on projects together. And I don't know. I keep <laughs> feel like spouting and spouting, but you know, working on ideas. We totally understand that teachers. You're working hard. You've got a lot of stuff going on. We want to help alleviate some things or definitely bring in new fresh material that you otherwise hadn't thought about because you you have to focus on so many things. Yes, Ulysses, this is great, absolutely cost of living. 
Yeah, and if you uh, if you look at some of the apartments in Monaco, I mean, they're beautiful. Mm-hmm. They're close to the ocean. And I mean, what you could get in Monaco for like a three-bedroom apartment, you're getting here in Salinas for like, or in Monterey or in San Jose. I mean, and it's just, it's bare minimum. And right. It, yeah, so it's just it's it's just ridiculous. Like anybody could go look up images of Monaco. I mean, it's beautiful. It's paradise, right? And, and then you look up, I'm like, oh, and you look, and you're like, wow, I don't think I could afford that. And you're like, wow, I'm I'm like five hundred dollars away from paying that. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, and yeah, it, it's it's just extraordinary that I was able to find something like that. I mean, uh, I'm a big racing fan, so I lo- I love watching Formula One and racing. Oh yeah, right. Yeah. So they have a big race in Monaco. They have a big race in Monaco. And I always thought, wow, I don't think I'd be able to afford any of those apartments. And then I looked it up. I'm like, oh, wow, I, I think I could be able to afford those apartments with like with what we're paying for like the housing here. And it's not so different in like food either. I mean, like, I think it's like $2 for like a soda. And that's what we're paying here. Like exactly. average $2 for a soda and like for meals and everything so it like our cost of living has just gone up so high here in california it, it really and, oh, has ta- taxes there's no taxes in monaco if you're a foreign <laughs> expatriate there's no taxes so everything that is used in the sales gets taken in and to uh, take care of that the only people that i believe pay taxes in monaco are uh expats from france or if you're a Montesquieu. Uh, so, right. So probably so if you were, you know, their colonizer. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so if you were born, if you were born in Monaco, which right. is just off the shore of France, right? then I think you pay taxes. And I think it's against the law for you to um, go to the casinos as well. The casinos are only for um, individuals who are not from uh, Monaco. And then you have to apply as well to only difference is when you apply to become a resident of Monaco, it's a quarter of a million dollars to apply. It's $250,000. That's, that's the same for New Zealand. Wow. You need, you need $250,000. Um, and to, to have them even, you know, look of even coming coming to stay like oh I'd like to live there oh yay I can afford to um pay they're like mm, yeah you need to have that in your bank account New Zealand actually has the most underground bunkers in the entire world and that's because a lot of billionaires go there to build underground bunkers right afraid that you know once you know, I guess the apocalypse, hit. <laughs> the zombie know, apocalypse, <laughs> like a solar flare just evaporates most of the atmosphere from the earth. Right. And it takes to rebuild then. Um, yeah, they go there. But uh, speaking of that and the looming threat of nuclear war, there is a movie off the BBC. It's called Threads, not to be confused with the social media. App. Oh, gosh. There's a movie called Threads, and it is one of the most. It is. It's very disturbing, and but is one of the is one of the most closest to I think realistic reality as to as, yeah as how our world would look like after a nuclear holocaust, and the reason I bring this up is because a lot of their knowledge, a lot of their their books, their data is lost. So most of them don't even know how to speak, read, or write. They're going through old tapes of like old children's shows on how to teach people how to read and write. And they're just playing that. And they start developing a new language, a new language. And they're trying to get back to the older language, a standard, but none of them are. So by the end of the movie, they're just talking just gibberish. And they're trying to grow food from knowledge that they don't know. And everything gets lost. So what I think is that, you know, this is great in holding something like this that we're able to, you know, go back and refer to what we have learned so far, because that that movie is definitely scary, and it's available to see it for free on YouTube. You can watch it. It's called Threads. It's Threads. Oh wow! I mean, right? I mean, so many of the science fiction books are, you know, it's very very realistic. You know, Handmaid's yeah. Tale. That book is old, and that is you can connect that yeah. to real world life. Margaret Atwood, yeah, yes. yeah, that, that, that's intense. You, you know, and and so that that's definitely one to that could um, work 
into it's like okay how to make those connections uh, i mean you know? just uh, yeah yeah just the other day or just yesterday uh, we were talking about uh, how uh, we use google to adapt and i asked the question well what if somebody is limited has limited mobility in their hands and such and can't type when they're moving their files around so they've already created a device where you put it around your head and you could use your thoughts to move oh, and yeah. command the computer. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's but, what Musk wants to do. Put a little chip, right? Yeah, that's he wants to go through that chip. Put the, put the, the chip to, you know, with the link. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, there's, there's, that, head, there's headsets. Our, our, I feel like, gosh, science fiction, it's like some of it's like, oh, wow. I mean, we're, we're still driving cars. We're not flying. We're not quite the Jetsons yet. <laughs> <laughs> I know you all are probably too young for me. But, oh, you I know. love the Jetsons. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. I'll tell yeah. you, some TV from back in the day, I such good. No, <laughs> they need to bring that back. <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. Margaret Atwood's good, isn't she, Denise? Right. Um, one of our English teachers met her and, oh, wow. um, and yeah, got to, got to speak to her. And so I was like, wow, that's, that's pretty wow. cool. Wow. I've, I've only met Tobias Wolf and uh, Jimmy Santiago Baca so far, but, uh, <laughs> but I've met other authors too as well, but wow, that's pretty good. But Wait, mm -hmm, sorry, sorry. Go on. Yeah. Oh, uh, where, where did they meet Margaret Atwood? That, I mean, was it here? Locally no, or? I think it was that it was college. And oh gosh, I can't I don't know where it was for his under. I'm not sure where he did his undergrad. He did his graduate. He just got his master's from CSUMB. Um, mm -hmm. It might have been down in L.A. He's originally from L.A. Wow. So definitely have to, have to ask him about that. But, you know, that there's there's opportunities, right? And, um, but again, banging on the drum, huh, Carmen? And uh, the, you know, <laughs> come see the library, come contact your librarian. We are here for you. You know, same thing, sorry. Going back to um, another reason why this Comic Plus database that I love is, you can read classics in manga. Um, you can read in different language too. Let's see, do I did I just put it under classics, right? You've got Shakespeare, right? Macbeth in in manga format. This this is actually going to engage students more than just here here's your here's your old tome of tiny print of Shakespeare that you're going here's your class set and uh so it does it does add to it there you can search by category right manga manga and anime is just so huge and it the I'll be honest, I that 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 is not my forte. And that's why it's like, please, yay, you kids, tell me, help me, let me know what you want so I can get what you like. So you you're consuming it. And it's this is good for you. I mean, people, it's the same thing. Um, you know, comics are great manga and it, they actually have the vocabulary in them is actually huge it's not just like oh what are you reading that comic for mm, okay so um there is a whole section where is it uh, maybe where, um, maybe it's this they have a whole sel books no this isn't it hmm. i'd have to find it for social emotional learning they have and you know just added they're constantly adding books right spanish it'll show you books in spanish you can search by publisher for what's popular 
I know Dark Horse, that's one I really know. <laughs> you know, you go on and on. Archie Comics, right? That that takes me back. <laughs> um, but so this this is something that I am trying to get on Clever so then it can be accessible to everyone. I've you know. Yeah, I didn't want to lose some baby. Right? <laughs> that you know so that somebody has everything and that the big deal is that everyone can read it at the same time uh, it, you know we, there's how to increase reading is seeing people read you know who who can who can we see read oh is my teacher reading when they want us to read or are they just going like this are we going through our phone well, while well, we say, okay, you know, you're doing independent reading. No, we should all, everybody take a break and let's all read together. Same thing, seeing um, other adults reads or administrators read. It, it makes the difference. <laughs>